Are you thinking about adding a 3D printer to your smart home? Are you looking for a device you can control with the Raspberry Pi? Well, stay tuned and I'm going to show you why getting a 3D printer is exactly what you should do. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ryan Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about why you should have a 3D printer in your smart home. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. Now, here's what we're going to be covering in this video. This is why you want to have a 3D printer in your smart home. First of all, what is a 3D printer? Next, some ideas on choosing a 3D printer. And then I'm going to show you some things that you can do with your 3D printer that really make it a very easy thing to add to the house because it gives you a lot of flexibility. Well, if you've never heard about a 3D printer, boy, are you in for some interesting things to find out what you can do. And with 3D printers, well, let me pull you a sample over here because I've been working my printer for about a month now and I'm, I'm having a ball. This is a remote control caddy. Now, there's a process you'll go through. You download a model unless you want to draw your own and that's a skill you can pick up down the road. Then you'll use something called a slicer that basically takes this and literally slices it so that it sends one level at a time out to the printer and it knows what to do. You can have, this is where this is one part, you can have items that are multi-parts. You can do things such as outlet covers. And let's face it, when you break an outlet cover, do you run to the store right away and go get one? Probably not. But with this, you've got the option of not taking just the standard white or the ivory, but if you have somebody who's artistic and wants to have a colored wall plate, well, you can take care of them with this. So that's certainly an option. Now, for safety, for little ones around the house, these are something you want to print right away, outlet covers. So that's something to think about. And we've got other things here, but I'm getting ahead of myself, so we don't, uh, don't want to spoil it just yet. But this is just more than just having something to play with. You can really do some things and start making a lot of things that you use around the house. Now, selecting a 3D printer is going to be something that you don't just say, pick one, I'll take that one, box it up. Now, you need to do a little bit of looking. And there are a world of videos here on YouTube that can help you in that process. Some may confuse you a little bit, but at least it gives you an idea. Now, this is the printer that I've been doing all the items you're going to see in this video with, the what got me attracted to this printer is it has parts in it that the company who made those made this printer, but they're also selling these parts for people to upgrade other printers. So this is something that if you don't already have some, some maker type skills, this will help you learn it. It's going to be very reasonable. You can do upgrades to this, but this is one printer that pretty much had upgrades that most of what you would need right out of the box. Cause some of the printers I looked at, you bought the printer and then it seemed like you immediately had to go out and start doing other things. Now, there are all sorts of filament available. You can get, you name the color, and most of the main colors are there, but you can get gold, silver, you can get filament in it with metal flake. There's PLA, ABS. I'm going to use PLA because that's the most affordable at this point, and we'll do a majority of what you want now if you really get into this and say that you're repairing vehicles you can get metal filament now you probably have to change your printer at that point but you can make some of your own parts at that point so like i said there's there's several things to to work with here and really the sky is going to be the limit this is what i started with you can spend a little bit less but you can spend into the thousands again this is the one i'm going with and you'll see my experiences as we go along. Each of the projects that you're going to see me talk about are ones that it's very handy to have those kind of things, and you don't have to be an expert at it. There's going to be things you're going to have to learn, and I'm willing to do some detailed videos, but I'll probably set up another YouTube channel because there are some on this channel who may not have any interest at all in 3D printers, and so I don't 
out of respect for that, I don't want to put content up that you're not going to be interested in. So maybe it's going to be better to focus on a channel that does directly that. Again, I'm looking for your comments in the video and you tell me if that's a move you would like me to make or if you're comfortable with me doing some videos here on the main channel because I want this to be most helpful to you. Now, this is one I showed a little bit earlier on. Now, this is a remote control caddy, and this was probably well short of the, the sample file that came with the printer. This is one of the first things that I printed. Now, I've, this is actually the second one I've gone and done. This is made, I did it with yellow PLA filament. There are, you can do almost any color you want to. You can even mix colors. So you could say print a third of it with white, a uh, third of it with red and whatever you want to do. I mean, you're the one who's making this and you don't have to worry about what you can find in the store or having to order one online. And some of while I'm talking, you'll actually see this being printed so that it's a very interesting process to go through. There are all sorts of changes you can make. There are more than just this one available online, but it's this is something really you can spend a lot of time with this if if that's what you want to do now i don't know about you but i always seem to break an outlet cover and then it's either make a special trip to the store have to remember to put it on the list so the next time i'm going to the store you get where this is going and if you have a room that's painted a certain color or if you have an artistic person in your family then you may have to go get a certain color well with having a 3d printer you actually, it, it starts printing from this side on, on the plate and it builds up layers over time to where you can see, get you a little bit closer there. So you can actually see there is some dimension to it as well as a recess for the screw. Now, this is something you can print in any number of colors if you want to make it multicolor. There's even rainbow filament. So if you've got somebody who loves My Little Pony, you can come up with some different wall plates for them. This one is specifically for electrical outlets. There are switch plate covers. Again, you name what you want to do. And this is simply going to be one way where you can make what you need yourself instead of continual trips to the store. Now, when there's little ones around the house, you never can be too careful. And this is one of the first things you might want to think about making. And this is a safety plug for electrical outlets. So you, if you've got little ones that are curious and sometimes stick their fingers in where they shouldn't and you're not around to catch them, this at least helps make things a little more safe for them. Now this is for US outlets, but I'm sure there's other models out there for the different types of outlets that are present around the world. You can make this any color you want to. You can have it white if so you get white face plates so it blends in and might not call attraction to itself. So to kind of help uh, keep the little ones away from it. If it's an outlet that you don't want used because you're already pulling the max load for the circuit that outlet is on and so you can only have one outlet up, this is another reason to have something like that. Again, there's a lot of uses for this kind of thing that when you can make it, makes it a little more useful to have something like a 3D printer around the house. Well, I don't know about you, but it seems like I'm always putting something together and it comes with little bags of those pesky screws that are hard to keep track of. Well, you can have a parts tray, something like this, that will help you keep it organized. So if it's just coming in bags of parts that are not labeled as to what step they are, which is one of the things I will say for the folks that made the, uh, the BiQ B1 printer is all the bags are labeled with the steps that those parts are needed in. So that's what makes this printer very uh, straightforward to put together but there are all sorts of these that you can print out the times it takes to print some of these will range anywhere from say an hour hour and a half to 26 27 hours and probably longer so this is not just something you flip a switch you put in a file and a few minutes it comes out so there's going to be some time that you'll have to wait as this is getting made for you now, besides the smart home stuff that I've shown you, there's some very practical things. Well, not the smart home stuff isn't practical, but when you've got somebody out late at night or out, say, hiking and they need to get help, you can always make a whistle like this. Even though they may already have one, you can make this for them and stick it in their backpack where they don't know where it is. But there's all sorts of things like this that's handy to have that you may not think about until you need it. And then it's a little late at that point. So this is 
very, what I'm trying to say is, is the 3D printer is very flexible. And this is actually a very low whistle. I'm not going to blow it because I don't want to make us both deaf in the process. And there's different whistle styles you want out there. So again, you're, between your imagination and what somebody's already created the models for on something like Thingiverse, there's other sites out there where you can get the models and then maybe with a little bit of tweaking and sometimes no tweaking involved, you can be printing something that will be very useful to you right away. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on the like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. See you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.